What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Quest Nutrition, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants. Bezos knows the, the personal trading space very well. Stop trading just time for dollars and shift from one to one client work to one to many, which you've done over and over again. Um, you can go to rise25.com, learn about us, and download your free dream product ladder. You can map out your business on one sheet of paper. And I'm looking forward to digging into this with Bedros. Today, we have Bedros Koulian, founder of Fit Body Boot Camps, currently the world's fastest growing fitness chain and listed as one of the Inc. 5000 fastest growing businesses. He is one of the go-to people in the fitness industry, and I know top people in all industries, Bejos, that go to you for advice, and it's because you've helped so many business owners go from you know, maybe struggling to six figures to seven figures and beyond, and what's interesting about your story is you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You, know, you had to fight through adversity to get to where you're at, and uh, as a child, you know, you immigrated to America, spoke no English, your family scraped by, and at one point I read you were even living out of your 1979 Toyota pickup truck, and you definitely have the immigrant edge. I want to make sure also we will talk about the book Man Up, Cut Your Bullshit and Dominate Your Path. Bejos, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Jeremy. I appreciate this opportunity. One thing, you know, I notice you talk about a lot is leadership. And so I do want to talk about man up and man up, cut your bullshit and dominate your path. So first, how'd you come up with that, uh, that title? Yeah, well, it's a strong title. <laughs> the reality is I am the anti guru guru. So, uh, I will tell you all the, you know, I, I'm the guy that has a therapist. I failed at more businesses than I've been successful at. It's just, I keep getting up and fighting. Uh, I am not college educated. All of my emails and blog posts have spelling errors in it. And I'm a bit rough around the edges, but I'm as transparent and authentic as they come because I figure if you're paying me, you deserve to know who you're dealing with. And so the truth of the matter is I was a horrible entrepreneur and simply made money from 2003, once I got on the internet in 2003, from 2003 to 2014, I made money by simply force of will, a hustle and grind 10x, right? You can only do that for so long before your business grows and the bottom falls out because you've got a foundation that's crooked. And so my employees hated me. I hated them. My business partners hated me. I hated them. My clients hated me. I hated them. And to me, they were all the problem. My employees, my business partners, and my clients and customers. I had a vision of what I wanted in my head. I was unable to communicate that to anyone. It wasn't until 2014 that I decided to man up. And Mm. really, when I think of the word man up and the way I write it in the book, man up means to cut your excuses, Mm. right? Cut your excuses, seize the opportunity, and reach your fullest potential. And so I had to cut my excuses and I had to say, I'm the problem. I am an indecisive leader. I come to work one day telling my team, we're going to focus on growing the franchise. The next day I go, hey, I've got a new business partner. We're going to grow this new info product. What does my team look at? How do they look at me in that moment? They go, this guy's so indecisive. I better go out and get another job. There's that one foot out the door. So a great leader, the way I write it in, in Man Up is when you man up, you are a decisive person. You have clarity in your vision where your business is going, when it's going to get there and what you need to do to get there. And then you've hired a team of fighter jets and not crop dusters. And fighter jets are people who are, see, I call it a team. Back then I had employees. Employees clock in, clock out, do the bare minimum, and call it a day. Right. A team is a group of people who are playing a sport with the, out, with the desire to win. I've got a team here, and they are playing with a desire for us to create 
2,500 Fit Body Bootcamp locations worldwide and to have 1,500 coaching clients worldwide. And that is how I will be able to touch millions of people through our franchises and coaching business. I'm so clear on my vision. I'm very decisive. I communicate better than I ever have. And I create a, a culture of team members who are fighter jets and not crop dusters. For that to happen, I have to sleep early, wake up early, dominate my mornings, lead from the front. And the moment I screw up, then I've set the bar too low for them. They start screwing up as well. So what caused that awakening in 2014? I had an anxiety attack and I, I write about it in the book. I had an anxiety attack so big. Uh, dude, my, my throat was closing up. I had tunnel vision. Both arms were tingling. Jeez. And I remember thinking, I think this is a heart attack. I'm 38 years old. I'm 43 now. I'm 38 years old and I'm in my guest house. Again, I had a nice house, but it was through sheer will that I earned the money to buy it. And I'm in my guest house. I'm going to die this morning from a heart attack. My wife's not going to find me until later tonight when I'm just bloated and stiff. That's the last memory she's going to have of her husband, right? And so I said, all I have to do is I need to stumble down the staircase so that she can find me and maybe rescue me. And as I stumble down the staircase, I get a breath of fresh air. I don't know what caused the anxiety to go away, but it wasn't a heart attack. It all of a sudden just went away. And I was left as a sweaty mess. My heart was still beating fast, but my hearing came back to normal. My vision, the tingling went away. My throat wasn't closing up. And I go, holy shit, I think I just avoided a heart attack. The next day I went to the doctor and they put you through the whole stress test yeah. and all that stuff. And, and he goes, you didn't have a heart attack, man. You had a massive anxiety attack. But if you keep this up, you will have a heart attack. Jeez. And best case scenario, you'll be in the, in the hospital. Worst case scenario, you'll be in the grave. And that's when I decided I need to man up. Otherwise, my whole life's going to crumble. I'm not going to have a family. I'm not going to have a business, and I might be dead. And in 2014, I said those five words, I need to man up, and I, the journey began. It was a two-and-a-half, three-year journey to be a, a fully manned-up entrepreneur to become who I am today. Where do you turn to in that situation? Do you, do you turn to a group? Do you turn to a mentor? The answer is yes. So I turned to Joe Polish in the Genius Network Group, and I rejoined Genius Network Group, um, and I'm still in it today. I turned to Craig Ballantyne, right, the most disciplined man on the world. You know, I was teaching him sales and marketing. I said, now I need you to teach me how to have structure in my day. I mean, my phone would ring, and I'd pick it up. I'd get a text, and I'd pick it up. But if it's not a scheduled phone call or a text, I shouldn't be responding. Yeah. And so he taught me discipline and structure and, and Joe Polish and his team taught me scaling my business and being saying no is okay so that I can say yes to better opportunities. Um, I felt like if, if you came to me with an opportunity and I said no, that I'm letting you down and that I'm a weak entrepreneur. So I would take on all these opportunities, but then I would deliver a shitty service as a business partner. And then you'd go like, what happened? And so I got a therapist, right? I mean, the list goes on. It's, it's mentors. It's friends who take good care of me. It's parting away from people who wanted to go tailgating uh, on, a, on a Sunday night, tailgate and concert. And then Monday morning, I'd wake up foggy headed, wondering what happened to me. So I had to cut out the crabs in my life, surround myself with better people, get coaching from the people that I wanted to be like, see a therapist and work through my shit. And so it was a two and a half, three year journey, man. But I, it's I an went ongoing through it. journey. Yeah, it's a continuous it journey. Is. Yeah, it continues, and I should have done it sooner. I regret not doing it sooner. So, Bedros, what will people get with Man Up? Like, I see this amazing package, right? I, I brought this because I know you're good friends with Craig, and you get this this perfect day formula yeah. box and book and workbook. So, I'm curious of Man Up. What are people going to get? Yeah. Man up is real simple, man. It, it is going to be a book. And, and listen, uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I've helped New York Times bestselling authors become New York Times bestselling authors by orchestrating their product launch, writing their right. video script for their free plus shipping offer. So I have, in fact, my wife's book is free plus shipping and she sold 22,000 of it. Wow. I refuse to be a New York Times bestselling author that way. I'm going to be a New York Times bestselling author with the help of you and your audience and the network that I've created and helped and I will continue to serve over the next 12 months because it's just one simple book, 51,000 words, and that book covers the three things that every entrepreneur is missing to reach their fullest potential, which is becoming an effective leader, having clear vision on their business, and a strong team. And so I teach leadership, I teach developing your vision, 
and building a strong team behind you because you can't do it all yourself so that you can reach your fullest potential. That's what Man Up is. Yeah, love it. Yeah, so we'll definitely make sure we link it up and so people can get it. Is there going to be an audio version or just a print version? Yes, there will be an audio version okay. and I will be the one doing the audio because that's what people ask the most. And I go nuts when I get excited. So uh, if you haven't <laughs> noticed. I yeah. love it. Talk about, I want to talk a little bit about the journey of the franchise um, because you said in the beginning with the tank of the economy, things were affected. What were the systems like then and, and talk about them them now? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, let me tell you first and foremost, I got to tell you that when I started Fit Body Bootcamp, um, in 2000 and uh, I'm sorry, in 2010, it was a licensing model and I feel bad. And I know a lot of my franchisees are watching this now. I feel bad for them because they just got 10 DVDs in the mail and good luck today. We've, it's evolved just in seven years from a license model to a franchise, a legitimate franchise. We have a four day university in-house business coaches that you can call and email anytime. We make your website, do your marketing for you. I mean, literally, as long as you deliver the service, which we teach you how to deliver, you will grow a business that's successful, profitable, and scalable. And so, but for that to happen, again, leadership is always the problem. Leadership is always the solution. I had to man up and become a better leader. And when I did, I decided who are the best franchises out there in my space and what are they doing? And I said, I'm going to do it better. So we deliver all the marketing. We send them the leads, our franchisees. Uh, and these systems took time to build. Right, right? yeah, for it, sure. It took time to build, but I invested in, if, if I knew that um, a particular brand out there, company out there had a great HR manager, I was, on, uh, I was on LinkedIn trying to find that HR manager and bring them in here. So all of a sudden, I wasn't trying to develop You're recruiting the talent. Manager. I was recruiting the talent, and that helped me time collapse. Wow. And that's the best thing, the best te thing I can teach right now is recruit the talent if you can, because you time collapse rather than trying to train somebody up into a role that you will later realize they don't fit into. Yes. And so, it, it, once I did all that, recruited the talent, created the systems that Fit Body Bootcamp is today, we became very quickly became a uh, entrepreneur's uh, 500 fastest growing franchises, and then Inc. Magazine's. Um, number 2006 on the Inc. 5000 list and just very blessed and thankful, man, that that happened. Yeah. I'm going to give a shout out to a friend, Ed O'Keefe, with his book, Time Collapsing, too. Yes. Uh, yeah. I love Ed O'Keefe. Because he said Time Collapse. Uh, amazing book. Uh, amazing entrepreneur. Um, so, you know, you can pick and choose because it also, I mean, it has to do with the systems, but people have to implement those things. So is there a criteria that you look for? Because you've coached thousands, maybe tens of thousands of personal trainers to set up their own studio, you know, in their own yeah. systems before you did the franchise. So what do you look for? What's the criteria? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and actually, we only take on 2% uh, of the applicants who apply. Because yeah. you and get so blamed we, in the end, you know, like you take someone that's on. It. Yeah. You, you bring, here's what happens, man. You bring on someone, someone on board to a franchise and they decide that, for example, Fit Body Bootcamp, we don't have juice bars, we don't have barbells, and we don't have kids care, we don't have uh, uh, showers. If I don't do my job right and we bring on someone who doesn't want to comply, which is why in the next room right behind me, we have a compliance officer. Yeah. His whole job is to make sure our franchisees who want to run a business like I'm selling yeah. actually comply because if they don't, they blame me. Then if they shut down, if too many of them shut down, the Federal Trade Commission goes, if you're wondering, by the way, why Cold Stone Creamery and Quiznos is not growing anymore, the Federal Trade Commission will not allow them to open up more franchises. Really? Yes, because uh, if you exceed a certain percentage of failure to launch is what they call it. And so I can't have failure to launch. So we put people through a rigorous, they fill out an application online. If they financially are qualified and if they have a fitness background, then we'll take them into consideration. They talk to a franchise business advisor. If they still make it through, then we have a discovery day where they come here and sit with me and our vice president of operations, seven people at a time, seven to one. Um, discovery day goes well. I set my expectations. Great, fantastic. Then they sign our franchise agreement, our FA, and then they come to a four-day university as a new owner. That four-day university is an indoctrination process on how we do business, how we don't do business, why we offer refunds, 12-month unconditional money-back guarantee, instead of saying, no, Mrs. Jones, you don't get a refund, and then now we have a bad Yelp review. 
And finally, we coach them every step of the way to open. And when the good idea fairy comes to them and says, you should open up a juice bar, a <laughs> club, a shower, right. we go, anytime you think you have a good idea, call us and we'll let you know if it's a good idea. But by doing that, it's an auto recorded you. message that says no. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, just hit, hit number one. No. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. But, but I'm telling you, man, I wish someone would have done that to me as an entrepreneur. Yeah. That said, hey, to be an entrepreneur, you have You're to be a strong leader. You're implementing almost what you wish you had, in a sense. That's it. All I'm giving my, my franchisees is what I wish I had when I started my five gyms back in the day. And it cost me so much time, effort, and money. Have there been any yeses with people having good ideas and actually implementing or no? Oh, absolutely. There man. have been. In okay. fact, yeah, yeah. We, we, we have uh, several locations out there. The owners are just badasses, fighter jets, fighter jets to the core. And they go, hey, here's how we're onboarding people. We're onboarding them online now. We're not closing them face to face like clients. And so we're now implementing their onboarding process here. And I love that I don't have a adversarial relationship. I've got a friendly relationship with my franchisees. And the reason for that is I don't charge a percentage of the gross revenue that they make. I take a flat fee every month. Mm. It's like seven. So they want to and grow so, as much as possible and they're not going to become, uh, you know, mad or, you know. Exactly. And I saw when I did my research that the most successful franchises out there were percentaging you to death. 8% royalties here, 1% marketing fees. And before you know it, you have an adversary relationship. I have a friendly relationship. My franchisees open up more locations, which I'm okay with. and I'm very okay with. I'd rather have 2,500 locations with 800 owners 100%. than 2,500. Yeah. And so because we have a great relationship, they tell me what's working for them. And now we keep putting that back into the system and the system grows faster than I could ever grow it on my yeah. own. Yeah. And I think I've heard you say, you know, you kind of go against the grain in certain respects with, with franchise. Yeah. And that, that's an example of that. How did you even decide? I mean, cause you would think, oh, you follow the normal path and you take a percentage of it. What made you go against the grain on that? And then what else did you go against the grain on? I blame Tony Robbins on that. And here's oh. why. Uh, again, I am not the smartest person ever, but I'm very coachable. Like, Jeremy, if you're like, B, do this and you'll sleep better, make more money, have a better relationship. I go, yes, sir. And I do it because you're trusted. You're friends with people I'm friends with. That's all I need to know. Because uh, I know I'm a knuckle dragging Neanderthal. So where that's concerned Tony Robbins, who I loved reading his books and stuff, he said, watch what everybody else is doing. And this was like in 2002. Watch what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. I just do that in everything now because <laughs> I know the masses are wrong because I trust right. Tony Robbins. And I've never even met the guy. Like, I'm a big fan and I will, hopefully one day I'll, I'll get to shake his hand. But um, so I said, well, what is the franchise industry doing? And are the franchisees friends with the franchisor? And I quickly realized they're not. Mm -hmm. And I said, why? And they told me. When I'm making 20 grand a month, the 6% is 1200 dollars franchise fee. When I'm making 30 grand a month, the 6% is 1500 dollars a month franchise fee. And I don't like that. I said, great, we're gonna be the anti-franchise franchise. I'm gonna do the Tony Robbins things and do the opposite. My franchising attorney hated that idea. I went against the grain against his advice because I said, well, if you think this is how it should be, I'm gonna go against the grain. And every time I do, we've grown faster, we've had more impact, and we continue to make more money. What else have you gone against the grain besides the franchise oh, fee? Um, well, coaching, for example. I and, and I love Dan Kennedy. Let me just preface this by saying I'm a big Dan Kennedy follower, disciple, and I love how he sells. And I believe we should all put money in people's pockets and set it on fire. That's a Dan Kennedy line, and that's a brilliant marketing strategy. Having said that, he believes in selling you his one-year mastermind paid in full. You're locked in. I look at it as you're not locked in. You can pay month to month. And if I don't deliver the service, you can leave. The way I look at it is if I lock you in and you don't like the service I'm delivering on my coaching programs, you're going to run my name through the mud and I'm going to have such bad reputation. And so, again, Dan Kennedy, who was the coaching and mastermind king, I said, you know what? The Internet is going to level the playing fields here where people can just slam me if I don't do my job. How about I do my job? You pay me monthly. And if I don't do my job, you leave. So that was another big, my masterminds generate me multiple seven figures and I went against the grain and I've never regretted that. Yeah. So Beatrice, I want to talk on that point for a second. You know, at Rise 25, we find that the highly successful businesses in any industry have a well flushed out product ladder, you know, different offerings at different price points to serve people where they're at. And you are a master at this. 
Okay. So I want you to talk about the different offerings you have available, like from the entry level to, to the highest level. Sure, sure. In fact, I shared this in 2010 at Yannick's um, underground event, and and I actually became the, uh, what do you call it, the speaker of the year, or yep, whatever he calls yep. it. I shared our whole funnel there. And I called it the machine. And so everybody comes on board through the free content that I give. It's either on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or my blog, right? They get onto my email list. And today, we collect their phone numbers as well, because we use Scipio to text them motivational, inspirational stuff. We never sell them with text. We sell them via email, but we deepen our relationship with them via text message because that's a very personal way of communicating. And so that's thing number one. As soon as I've got their contact info, the indoctrination process begins. I begin to get them to fall in love with me. And if you go to bedroskulian.com and opt in or ptpower.com and opt in, you'll see well before whatever you opt in for, we send you, but then the indoctrination prog pro process begins where I'm telling you my story, my hero story, the hero's journey, my purpose, my mission, and then start making you offers. By the time I'm making you offers, you and I are connected. And the products are usually in the $49 to $99 range, the first offers I make. From there, we go right to the multi-hundred dollar offers and continuity, like Fitness Business Ignition, Fit Pro Newsletter. Um, these are $99 a month programs that I've got literally thousands of clients on board. Once you're there and pay me continuity, that means you trust me more. See, I look at when you're a customer when you pay me once, when you buy a closed clients, one of my info products for 49 bucks or whatever it is. You're a client when you agree to pay me on a reoccurring basis, you trust me. We, uh, what is it, 800,000 people or 800 million people trust Netflix enough to pay them on a continuity basis. Right. I've got thousands of fitness people to pay me continuity, they trust me. Now I'm ready to move you into a live event where I'm gonna either sell you coaching or to Fit Body Bootcamp franchise application where I'm gonna sell you a franchise if you're a good fit. And that's my ascension ladder, but every step of the way, I look at it as a 10 to one ratio. For every dollar you give me, I've gotta give you 10 back. Yeah. And so- You wanna provide got, that value, yeah. Mm -hmm. So because of that, High Tech Trainer, one of my software products, which was making me 20 grand a year, or 20 grand a month, I shut it down because we had a high attrition level and it was not meeting my client's expectations. Mm. Uh, fitness Marketing Manifesto, a $99 a month physical newsletter, was making us $12,000 a month. Nothing to write home about, but still good money. Yeah, I shut it down because I wasn't able to create content fast enough to fulfill it. Um, I was promising a unicorn, delivering a donkey. Um, the uh, Medical referral manual, basically how trainers can get referrals from doctors. Um, the guy that I partnered with, he meant well, but the content was not deep, it was shallow, people weren't getting results, refund rates were high, I shut it down. Because like Warren Buffett says, it takes you 20 years to build reputation and 20 seconds to ruin it. Right. And so every step of the way that I'm ascending people up the machine, if I can't over deliver, then I'll unplug the product. Bajos, I know you have another session in three minutes, so I just wanna point people towards where they should check out more, and I urge anyone to get man up. I'm gonna get the, the audio version whenever it comes out, on Audible or wherever. Um, get man up, cut your bullshit, dominate your path. Where should we point people towards um, online? Uh, good question. Either any of my social media sites, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, just Bedros Koulian, or my blog, BedrosKoulian.com. Okay, Bedros, it's Koulian, K-E-U-I-L-I-A-N. Bedros, it's been absolutely fantastic. I really appreciate you, your time, and, and thank you so much. Thank you, Jeremy. If there's anything I could do for you, just reach out to me. Will do. Thank you. See ya. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.